This video, we're going to be taking a look at Wesley's offense. This is his semifinal game against Wes or against Fancy. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at uh, Wesley's offense heading into the Madden Bowl final. So super excited for this one. Wesley uh, really surprised me and probably a lot of people uh, coming into the Madden Bowl. Um, people expected Wesley to make a, gun, uh, a good showing. He always does. But ultimately, the fact that he made a Madden Bowl final is pretty impressive given the fact that the last couple of years, it seems like Wesley has really kind of been on his own in terms of labbing, in terms of crew. He's not with 818 anymore, from what I know. And so just the fact that he's doing what he's doing, kind of, for lack of a better word, like solo, uh, obviously I'm sure he has some people, but really, really interesting and really fascinating. Now, Henry and Wesley, uh, when they match up, as you can see, highest career MCS earnings. And you see Wesley is the only one that's even close uh, to King Henry. So uh, keep that in mind. Now, Wesley is going to be starting out with the ball. He is in the Colts playbook, gets out of there with a juke early and uh, going to get a nice play right out of the gate. Now, uh, Wesley runs Colts. Henry runs Colts. Wesley runs Chiefs. Henry runs Chiefs. What does that tell you about those playbooks? <laughs> they are the best playbooks for a reason, all right? We have full ebooks on both of those on our Patreon. If you want to learn how, to, how I teach them, how I run them, um, and, and I literally just, you know, it's, it's basically a lot of what you see these guys do. But anyway, this combo right here, uh, is definitely one of Wesley's favorites. This is the combo that he loves to run in this situation. Okay. Now we have to at least ask the question why? So we get this running back wheel, we get this corner. So that is essentially a two man combination with a clear out uh, streak in the middle of the field. But basically what we're going to do is this is only ran, or for Wesley, generally, it is mainly or primarily ran when the ball is on the left hash mark, the bunch is to the right. And what you're going to see is because the running back wheel is going from the short side to the wide side of the field, when it turns up field late in the route, it's going to pull any outside third, any outside quarter. So what's the base defense that Fancy's in? This guy's in a third, a third probably, probably a third, and then these guys are in, you know, some variation of a defense that looks like this typically. So we're going to put this defender in conflict and we're going to say, okay, you can either take the running back or you can take the corner, but you can't take both. And there's really no zone in the game that can get back on this deep corner. Right? So that's the idea. Now, if it was covered two, even easier because this cloud will never get that depth. And then also this safety will get pulled inside by the streak. Okay, so it's a rollout play. We're designing a rollout. We're trying to get out here and essentially have a high-low between our drag and our corner, okay? So uh, Fancy knows this. So what Fancy decides to do is he says, I'm going to go use the corner route and completely take that away, which is fine. And guess who that leaves open? Our little backside mesh spot route, wide open in the middle of the field and able to take some easy, easy yardage there from Wesley. So you don't see people defend it like Fancy did a lot, and you don't see people have that little backside route like uh, Wesley did a lot. Now, this is his red zone play. If you want to score more in the red zone, I would lurk this. I would take this directly from Wesley. This is a great red zone dot, um, and this is with our bunch. Specifically, our bunch has to be to the wide side for this to work. So what we're going to do is we call verticals. The pre purpose of calling verticals is we have this outside wheel to our outside receiver. The rest of the play is pretty much hot routed. And what we're looking for here is we have this ghost route. Now I talked about this before, but what a ghost route does is let's say this defender on the outside here, or even this one, let's say he's in a cloud. For whatever reason, this has been a thing since Madden 21, he will come inside and sit on the numbers. He will guard the ghost route every time. So essentially what's gonna happen is this ghost route will pull any curl flat, any zone that's in this section, he goes to the numbers every single time. That's a huge, huge deal because now we can throw this crosser right here on the side. So what does the user have to do? The user has to climb and basically take the crosser across the formation. That's going to leave two primary holes. The first hole is going to be in the middle of the field, which is why we run this guy on an underneath drag. So if you think about, again, what are they, what are they in defensively? We're probably doing something like this, right? So Typically, this is a third, maybe a third here, maybe a third here, maybe a curl flat, and maybe a hook curl. 
in this situation, the user has to come over here and take this, even if this guy's in a flat. So what's the space of the field that's left vacated? We have this where we can throw this underneath, or let's say this guy goes here, then we can throw this in this pocket because again, this wheel is, is coming outside. So let's take a look at the adjustments Fancy ends up using. Again, there's that blitz, one, two, three. Now he lurks here, which is fine. It's actually really good. And let's primarily just look over here for a second. So you see here, we got a third, we got a flat. Automatically, this is open right here. You can throw this right here, okay? He ends up cross manning X, which is fine. Um, and then let's take a look on the backside. What do we have? Well, we have again, either a third or a cloud. It kind of looks like a third, um, you know, sometimes hard to tell, but this right here is open. We could throw this. He ends up choosing not to, but look at the user. The user went to the crosser. Now the user understands I've got to take this space because this guy's coming right back into my zone. So it leaves this. And as you can see, this is just a set feet lead beam right here. Just a nice little catch and get a really, really, really great play by Wesley. That, that red zone play, that's a really good red zone play. You should steal the red zone play. I should steal the red zone play. Anyone that runs anything remotely similar to Bunch should steal that red zone play because it's probably the best Bunch red zone play in the game. Really, really effective. Here we're going to try to run the ball, just see if we can get a free seven. Not able to get it. It's going to bring us up second down, same kind of thing. Uh, he ends up running the ball again, and this time he's able to get in, and that's free seven. And so now we turn to his second drive. So again, um, Wesley's played really good defense, but I just wanted to primarily in this video focus on, because I've broken this whole film room down, but I mainly wanted to focus on Wesley's offense and really kind of try to get inside his head a little bit on why he does what he does, when he does it, and how he does it. So hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Okay, so bunch strong. Let me get my little marker out. Okay, so here we go, double corner, okay? Now, why do we go this in the middle of the field? I'm not really sure. I wouldn't call this in the middle of the field. Now, Wesley, obviously, he's probably labbed this and understands that he has enough space to hit the short corner, but essentially here's what we're looking for. So this guy's a third, third, and then this guy is typically a, a purple. This curl flat zone normally does not get enough depth when he's pressed to be able to defend the tight end short to the corner. The deep third is really going to be playing your deeper corner out. So essentially what happens is if you, if you just look at my little screen here, the deep corner goes right about in here, and the short corner is going to be thrown here. So basically this zone has to get this depth. Now, uh, let's take a look at how this actually plays out. Okay, so you see we get the curl flat here. Um, and then we get a three man again, he's lurking right here. Okay. So France, uh, fancy right off rip. He chooses to go to this corner out. So you can't throw, you really can't throw that tight end corner. At least, you, I mean, it'd be a hard throw. And so you see here, I mean, this play is pretty much dead. I would just scramble up. It's going to put you on a hash. He throws that. And this is a beam. Oh my gosh. This might be labbed actually. I'm sure it is. If you faded this guy, it'd probably be a little better. But this is just a rollout dot. So when he rolls out, you'll see you can throw this right here. Now, if he gets an animation where this guy gets touched, then he would probably drop it. But because he's able to possession it, man, that's a good dot. I don't know. That's a tight window. That's a super tight window. And that's why Wesley is one of the best offensive players in Madden. Here we go. He gets across the 50. Guess what play he calls almost every single time when he gets across the 50? This right here. We talked about this a second ago. Uh, as far as the purpose of this backside combo, I am not 100% sure. Uh, I, 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 don't, I guess I, I see this combo here. I feel like this is just for man. I'm just not sure why you would put the tight end on that route specifically. Uh, but you see here, that's open. He gets kind of a little lost in the pocket. And he's going to have to throw this away because he didn't. Uh, yeah, it kind of just got pocket kind of collapsed a little bit on that one. Second and 10, same situation, same play call. So you see here, this is a throw. But users here, this is a throw. And he throws that. Nice read. If that's mid zone, that's, a, that's bagged. But in this year's game with set feet lead, you could put the ball 
you can just you can really put the ball on spots. Uh, so we're gonna go a little RPO, just trying to get a constraint theory play. Purpose of this play call, really just trying to get some cheap yards. Um, force fancy to have to realize, oh, he might call the RPO. Love the play call, honestly. Um, I think more in more of these comp games, these these like super heavy pass heavy guys. I'd like to see them go to more RPO stuff because it opens everything else up. Same thing, same exact play, rolling out. We're trying to get to this spot. And really, look what we're looking at. We got our tight end here. I guess this is cover two. I guess this attacks cover two on the weak side. But this is where we're looking. Should be wide open. It is. And uh, doesn't get a great animation there. Doesn't get a great animation there for sure. All right. So right here, uh, this is where this. I love this route combo. This is Durham without a wheel route. Okay. Uh, this is Durham without a wheel route. So we have this little fade from Dagger. This is out of Dagger. So we get this nice little fade here. So this off rip, we're looking this way. What you see most of these pros doing is they're basically playing cover two to this side, which is fine. Um, I wouldn't say it's the best coverage because you're really using three over one, and then you honestly just don't have a numbers advantage over here. But anyway, we're looking to flat quick, not there. We're looking to the running back. Not there. We got a yellow here, but it will be open right here. And then the user is kind of lurking from the tight end to the post. So right, right there, has it, throws it, catches it, and gets a KO. And that's a tight window. It's good defense from Fancy. Good tight window. And fourth and six. What do you call when you're on the line here? Fourth and six. We're going to double post. I don't love this call, but he does go to this. This was the same call that uh, Mr. Football used. And basically, okay, so the thought process, we gotta clear out this guy, and then this post route, of course, we know is gonna, it's gonna get open right in this window right here. So we have a flat, that flat's gonna pull this curl flat. The C route is also gonna kinda pull this curl flat. So this little pocket right here, it, it, the user, see how the user goes this way? Running back's open now, I'm gonna hold it, and we do have this post coming late right in here. He is going to throw it, and he is going to catch it. Nice play. Nice play. I feel like Fancy, that wasn't bad on either side, honestly. It was a tight window. He hit the tight window. And you got to respect Wesley. I mean, offensive side of the ball, this guy is this guy is really good. a good watch, good study. Gets a pick here. And so now... Uh, we're in clock management mode, so he starts out with a run. We're trying to clock this out. Uh, Fancy does get ball at half. So Wesley being up two scores at halftime is really important. It helps him maintain uh, control of the game. A little run play here. No? Yeah, RPO. Love the call. See, look out here. Look how open this is. Look how open this is. See, this is what I call a constraint theory play. You have to make, you have to force him to respect that. This is wide open. He doesn't throw it, I guess, because the user ran out there. Doesn't throw it. Yeah, that RPO is wide open. I'm surprised you don't see more of those ran in comp. I mean, there's people that have entire schemes of what RPOs, but a lot of these, like, like people like Wesley Henry, Fancy, all these guys. They don't run a lot of RPOs. Maybe they just don't think they're maybe they think they're they're cheese or whatever, but they really give you a significant advantage because that forces them to have to really think about what they're doing to the circle receiver. Here we're gonna go to trail, I think. No, RPO. Okay, look again. Wide open. Let's throw it. I mean, look at all that. I mean, I guess he's saying, okay, he's got a one on one, but I feel like that's fairly wide open. Hmm. All right, second and seven. I'm going to wide trail. Tight end crosser. Okay, okay, okay. So this is important. So we go to wide trail. Where does it put this? To, this is a great play call. This is kind of neat. It puts him on the numbers. So for those of you that don't have Howard Master, he uses a slot hitch in the same fashion. So look at the combo here. He uses a flat in the same fashion with the corner route. This should be a running back streak, in my opinion. Let's see if he does that. Yeah, a little running back streak. All right, let's look at this. Off rip, cover two to the right. Corner route. Look what the corner route's doing. It's taking this guy out of the play. 
Look who's wide open, the running back in the back of the end zone. Misses the read, but again, he's probably looking here. He sees he has a step on him, and he's got that hitch pull in that cloud. That's a really good – Wesley has some red zone dots, boys. Wesley definitely has some red zone dots. Probably the best red zone offense we've seen in comp this year. No one – I haven't seen many people consistently have a legitimate dot. I mean, these are legitimate dots. And I put people, I mean, I told you guys about the ghost route back in December. Look at this hitch. This out route. You would want to throw that right in there. That's a really tight window to hit. But the user has to climb here. I mean, the user just has to cover so much. And so that's where this becomes wide open. This is a great playmaker. This is something we haven't even talked about. So he's rolling away from the play. The play's kind of dead. So he's going to playmaker this guy to the left. He ends up throwing it and getting some easy yardage there. So good play by him and good play by Fancy. And Fancy's actually going to get out of here and not a terrible spot for him. Ends up holding to three after throwing a book. And, um, and now he's going to be able to get the ball. I'm pretty sure he's going to go down and score. He gets some he gets three, I think. Yeah, gets three, I think. So fancy gets ball to half. So now fancy's got, you know, pretty much ball for a while. We'll fast forward up to here. Ends up tying it up. Yeah. Last time we saw this, plus he had a 10 point lead, which is why it was important for him to get points on that drive. Because uh, because it allows him to continue to maintain control of the game. Because now, even though he's, yeah, I mean, he's still in a good spot. Now, again, RPO, look at this. Look at all the space. I feel pretty good about that RPO right now. I don't know. I would throw it. I would throw it. He ends up, he's running the ball a lot out of this RPO, but I feel like the RPO is actually open. But no big deal. He made, Why is he running the ball? Wants to get on a hash mark. Now he's in a situation, and Wesley does this more than most players. Uh, when he is in the middle of the field, he's actually willing to pass. Most players aren't. Uh, at this level he goes to his favorite route combo in the game and it's really this and again it's designed that he wants to get out here and he wants to throw this corner over here to the right side which is a great route um, you see here users kind of stuck in the quicksand on these couple reads and so he's got time to be able to get this he ends up getting screamed at unfortunately and has to throw it away but I mean the, the combo was open it's just fancy is is definitely putting the pressure on him all right, so third and eight. Let's see. We're going to go. I love this play. Yeah, this is that same play. This is – there's a flat. What's that flat do? It pulls the purple, pulls the cloud over here. The post is going to pull the yellow in about here, which leaves this pocket where you can throw the running back. Now, he snap throws this, and that's almost a pick. I mean, this is really – I mean, <laughs> this is this must be why they're halfing this guy right here. So this is a deep half, okay? And this is a, a cover two. So this is a deep half. He's he Because he's so slow to back up, he actually plays this streak like ridiculous. This is a pick. I mean, golly. Ends up catching it. Um, yeah, I mean, he would have had the running back. He would have had everything. And... Yeah, I just it's not a great read, man. It's it's really not a good read, and mm, you feel you feel like that should be picked or at least KO'd, and instead it's a first down. So right off rip. Okay, so situation here. Ball's on the left hash. He's been blitzing a ton. You see, I mean, this Sun Five has been pretty pretty much what he's been in. Um, we go with the wide trail, and this is really looking for this bomb over the top. Now the problem, a couple problems. Number one, this bomb should be called over here, okay? Because you want your post to run from the short side. Because look at how, look at, so like he's going to cut in here and his route will stop about here. You want his route to go to about here. The way you accomplish that is by snapping this on the other hash mark. You're also getting screamed at right here. It's a good pressure. Let's see what is that. I mean, we'll see if he tries to hit it. He is going to roll out. He is going to try to throw this. And he is going to hit it. There you go. What do I know? So that, that bomb can be thrown on either hash mark, which is kind of interesting. Good play. Good call. 
And it was a big seven. That was a big seven, too, for Wesley. It was, again, maintain control of the game. Maintaining control of the game. Super, super important. Fancy coming down here to the red zone. Again, all so many games are decided here. Look at this. Fourth and goal. Fancy on the red zone. I think he ends up going for it. I actually think he gets it. And now we're going 23 or 24-24 uh, with about four minutes. So this is a kind of a tough situation for Wesley. And what he decides to do here is I'm pretty sure he decides to end up saying, okay, I'm just going to try to score and get a stop. Now he's going to start on the ground. Again, RPO, let's throw it, buddy. Um, he's going to start on the ground, no problem, and brings up a second and eight. What are we going to again? Look at this. I, this is the play. I mean, he has called this play at least seven times this game. At least seven times. And again, we send five. Good read right there. Love that. Good read. What's interesting is watching him run the same play and really have different progressions and different routes that he's kind of trying to hit. Like right there, it was clear he was looking right there. Let's see what he does here. So, again, we get this. Um, whoops. I apologize. Messed that up. Hit the wrong button. Okay. So, we get this. Little, uh, this is the crazy. Little three-man A-gap right at the middle. Corners open. Almost throws a lurk. Oh. Oh, man. I talked about that in the other video I did on this. But that was an interception. That was a really bad... And you see, I mean, this is and this is the play we're going to live with, live and die with here. This corner out, I mean, he is in love with it. He loves this corner. This is not a. Mm, I just feel like he's late on the read. I mean, it's it. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> not good. Not good. We'll just move on. That was that was a bad read. I mean, it wasn't a bad read. I think it was a late read. Again, RPO, wide open. Don't throw it. Kind of interesting. Fourth and – is he going to win another fourth? I don't know. They replayed that. So now, um, you know, again, now we're, in a, now we're in a little bit more of a clock situation where we're about midfield, two minutes. You can definitely clock this out and basically just finish the game out here. It kind of, you know, fancies mentally, you know, out of it. Not out of it, but like – He's mentally affected by what just happened. And we go to dagger here. That's open, but we don't throw it because another thing you'll see a lot uh, as you watch Madden and you watch your tape back, you'll find that what happens is when you miss a read, you'll become a lot more undisciplined in general because you're scared to make a mistake. You want to embrace your mistakes. And, and really more than that, like the right read, I snapped it, I read it, I throw it. But what Wesley is saying here is, okay, I almost threw a pick on this last time. So I'm going to let that develop, and I'm going to focus my main read really over here. So what you'll see is the user goes here. He should be throwing this tie in right now. Easy, and he gets a nice blue pass. Good job. But I think it's interesting. I find myself doing the same thing. It's like you become more hesitant to throw stuff when you've been lurked on that route. But if you just, you know, if you had just thrown it against the right coverage, you would have been fine. Obvious run down here upfield and he's fighting for yardage i mean this is this is it i mean you're just trying to clock this out i mean uh yeah here we go double post i don't know about this we get a sin six and yeah, really you gotta go running back here nice read juke up that's perfect second and three that's exactly what you want because if you get a first down the game's over so you got you got really you got three chances i'd probably i don't know you probably have to take your three, but you know, you, you've got plenty of chances here to get this. And what do we go to? We go back to this RPO. Now it's not open. Now we're playing hard flats. But we get this, get stopped. And let's see, third it brings up a key, third down two. You give gave fancy a lot of credit uh, and a lot of growth as a player, really fighting through a lot of adversity in this game. Oh, third and two. Mid it and 15. Okay, so here we are. We go to smash return. They love this play in this situation, and I because it just attacks horizontally so well. I mean, look at look at him wide open. Yeah, fancy has to use her this. 
He's a little late to come down, but he's trying to come down here. I mean, it's the right throw. It's really the only throw. Catches it, and that's GG's, boys. Guys, thanks for watching the video. If you want to learn more about these offenses, defenses, all that stuff, it's in the Patreon. Link is in the description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.